It's Neil time. Oh God, Neil Fallon. <laughs> it's Neil time. Neil. He's your last saving grace before Neil. the sandwich. <laughs> Innominus Neil Essentus <laughs> Fallon. <laughs> So hey, it is Neil time. So he'll be joining us in just a second. So we're going to have with us in just a moment, Neil Fallon, lead singer of the greatest rock band on earth, Clutch. If you don't know them, you should look them up. They are fantastic. And Neil is just one of our favorite people over here. So everybody welcome Neil Fallon. Hello. Hey, Neil. What's up, buddy? That happened quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, they, they don't give us... Um, uh, they don't give us uh, much warning when they transport us from one place to another. Good. Mm, yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes you can be mid sentence and you're like, boof, and you're here. It's like, awesome. well, beam uh, me up, Scotty. <laughs> you've been grinding this out all day, huh? Woo. Yeah. Well, you know, just to the inevitable end of this beautiful jar of disgust. Mm -hmm. So, you want to come over, man? Share, share, share some dinner? I'm trying to think of some something witty to say in Yiddish, but it's not <laughs> oh my gosh, man! Good. Yeah, it's been a great day. I can't. I, I, once again, we're sitting here humbled. We're at uh, almost fifty-one thousand dollars. Amazing! Uh, can you yeah. even believe that? It's been amazing, and thank you to all those people who I don't know who did that. So I, I know I, I, it's mind blowing to see. Everything from people donating five dollars up to people donating fifteen thousand dollars, and they come together and in seven hours raise fifty one thousand dollars to help save these kids. It's just okay, yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to to formulate the words. To it is express the gratitude. Yeah, you know? it is. Like thank you doesn't. It feels a little hollow, almost like mm -hmm. thank you. I don't know. Like thank you doesn't feel like it fits it. Like I need to get each one of them and give them a hug. You yeah, know? <laughs> it kind of hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can we just virtually hug this out a little bit because you, you people are ridiculous. I, I literally last year when we said, "Hey, let's try to raise twenty five k," I thought that was dumb. I thought there's no way we're going to raise that much. Yeah. And then this year, I really thought, well, double that. That's not going to happen. And hey, here we are. You no, know, it's um, uh, it's amazing. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. re it's reassuring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It gives you a little bit of hope. But let's talk about some things, man. Let's talk about Clutch. So COVID kind of kicked music in the butt mm -hmm. for like yep. two years. But I mean, I know, I know we'll get to this in a minute. You're coming up with a tour, which is amazing. But during COVID, you guys actually did a number of online virtual shows. How yep. did those work out for you, for you guys when, and, and keeping music going during a pandemic? Well, um, the prior fest that we did this time last year was kind of just occurred a few yeah. months after the first time we did it. Yeah. And, and I think I said this then, but there was a two weeks in March that I think everyone remembers when we realized it was like, oh, this is, this is different. This is going to be something else. And then to see like a year's worth of, touring evaporate yeah. in, in a day and it was like i didn't sleep for about two two three months as i'm sure a lot of people didn't uh so it was kind of like the disruption forced us to figure something out not only because financially but just to work because yeah. work is good you know the satisfaction of making something and Look, I, I'm I'm the end user of computers. I'm not a <laughs> tech guy. No one in the band. We like we like making noise, but as far as like the idea of streaming, that was something completely alien to us. So we started doing the YouTube thing as a dry run, <clears throat> and then we did the Doom Saloon, which is the kind of nickname of the studio that we're in, and it was amazing. That yeah. it saved our butts. It really did. And it's a testament to clutch bands. I mean, yeah. watching a, a concert on a laptop or a TV, it's not the same. I get it. But there were people that just bought the ticket and didn't even watch it. <laughs> it kind of like a like a tip jar. <laughs> so it was um it was a learning experience. And of course, we had help. 
from friends, you know, Dave and Allie, who you know, helped us out immensely. That yeah. we went from very crude to hopefully something that looks moderately professional. Yeah, your first one was on your laptop camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, this is what I'm talking on right now. Right. <laughs> and then your last one was like five cameras and 4K, and it was like, whoa, what the heck? This is just like being in the show, except not, but yeah, without, as good as you can get. Belt, you know, but hopefully, you know, now that it, it, that's one of the amazing things about technology is such a small footprint that yeah. we could get a couple flight cases and put all that in there and we could continue to do this when we're in real venues with real people and broadcast it like let's say you want to watch what a crowd looks like in Stuttgart, germany and see the show yeah. um that's something we're thinking about um because I mean, why not we, we learn that skill yeah that's amazing. What a great idea because there are fans, you know, maybe some crazed ones, like I might know one or two, that would go to shows all around the globe if they could get on a plane and fly there. But I would love to go see a show like when you play in some of these countries where you see these avid clutch fans. I would love to see what a what a what a show looks like in Germany or in well, Spain either. or somewhere. Well, pretty much look I mean, from my perspective, and I've said this before, like you put a bunch of people in a dark room and feed them beer and turn up the volume. It's like, it's the great unifier. Yeah. Everyone behaves the same. Yeah. And, but there are plenty of people that live geographically far away from venues. You know, yeah. it's hard for us to play in, you know, Northern Saskatoon. Yeah. But there might be a clutch fan who would love to see the show. Um, so we'll see. It's, it's a, a work in progress. Hey, before I get to you, John, I got one one question on this. What do you think the first live show is going to be like post COVID? Like when you when you play that first venue in your you know thirty years of touring, what do you think that's going to be like that first post COVID show? Well, I probably shouldn't say this because have, we haven't signed the ink, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> I think our first show might be in Alaska. Yeah, it, I, I'm not, a, it's not, you know, 100%, don't, you yeah. know, don't hold it against me. But at first I was like, there's just no way because we're going to do another Doom Saloon and then it's basically do that and then we put all the gear into a bus and then we fly to Alaska. And I, I, initially I was like, no, this, that's a terrible idea. But then again, I was like, well, are you going to wait for something? Like you've been waiting for a year and a half. Yeah, kind of a cool statement. You know, we've been trying to get up to Alaska. I mean, that would that and um, that would mean the only other state we haven't played is um, uh, I don't see. That might be the last one. Really? So it's like what? a bucket, it's like a bucket list thing, I guess. What? That's <laughs> awesome. Sure that would be a great way to do it because, from all indications, I've heard crowds. You know, like rock crowds in Alaska, they deliver. I, I bet. There's no half measures. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, John. Okay, come on. I know you got to tell about the giveaways and stuff. So I have come to. On I got to interrupt. I got to talk about uh, some housekeeping items. But first, Clutch in Alaska, I'm there. Let's make it happen. Um, I, I, I mean, it. I, I was just thinking about how, how can I how can oh, I fly Oh, that would be incredible. There. So, um, giveaway. Everyone keeps asking, what's the clutch giveaway? What's the clutch giveaway? So, Neil, I'm going to need a little bit of help here because I can't remember all the things because there's a lot of things, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to start with some of the big ones. We've got a orange amplifier signed by the entire band. Yep. No, it's right here. Hold on. All right. Let's see what else we got. got. So, there is a box, but I took it out of the box just so you know this is real. You know, this is... Orange Amplifiers, thank you very much. They donated this. <clears throat> They're an awesome company, um, legendary British amplification. Uh, this is a bass head uh, that we did sign up. And that's that's that. Oh my that's gosh, that awesome. is beautiful. Um, let's see, what else we also have? Uh, this one, this is a what's called a terror stamp. It's a guitar pedal, but in act, in, it's an amplifier. It has a tube in it. so you can power a cabinet with this. Uh, really? Yeah, it's, it sounds awesome. 
Tim played through it. Uh, you want, want me to keep running and hitting these things? Keep running want... through yeah. it. Show what we got because we, we want to get the people hyped up. While Neil is grabbing it, here's how you enter for all of our newcomers. Donate. Type in exclamation point donate to give you the proper link. Once you use that link, for every dollar you donate, you will get one buck. You can use as many of those bucks as you get to enter the giveaway to increase your odds. Uh, it can take up to 15 minutes for your bucks to become available. So here's all you got to do. Exclamation point donate. Grab that link and make a donation. Say you donate $10, you'll get 10 bucks. Uh, to make sure you have your bucks, type in exclamation point bucks and you'll see how many you have. And then finally, to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is exclamation point GEA for giveaway, space, and the amount of them that you want to use. The instructions are right beneath me if you need a refresher. But sorry to interrupt you, Neil. Continue, please. No, that, that's good. <laughs> that was very concise, well articulated. I've gotten uh, a lot of practice today. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so the other item we have is this vinyl of uh, one of the just as you were mentioning, Chris, the Doom Saloon Volume 2, we did not record Volume 1 because we were just taking baby steps. So I, I wish we had. But so this is the first recording. I will get the guys to sign it up. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but you have my word. So the only way you could have gotten this is if you purchased a ticket and then this along with it at the time. So these are pretty hard to find. This is my own one of two copies I have. Uh, then, uh, what else we got? here is a set list that I wrote up sometime, I'm going to guess 2013 or 14, because it's Earth Rocker. That, oh my gosh, that is so cool. So there it is. Um, oh, man. You know, one of the things about touring is there's a lot of downtime. You know, there's this show, it's like 90 minutes, maybe your sound check last half an hour. Clearly, I was bored, and <laughs> I just kind of. That's amazing. That's a Neil Fallon original, huh? Yeah, it's this is ink. This is like a ballpoint pen on paper. That is and awesome. It's, it's the only one that exists. The Big News one, and the Texan Book of the Dead, Earth Rocker, Crucial Velocity, Mob Goes Wild, Prophets of Doom, Book of uh, Book Saddle and Go, uh, Cyborg, Immortal, Yeti Struck Down, Open Up the Border, Regulator, Always a Bella Wolfman, Into Electric Worry. So that's that. That is incredible. And we have, oh, uh, I have a laminate or something. This is, con uh, I drew up kind of like concept art for Blast Tyrant. This is a Xerox. The, the original does not exist. There's only one other copy. I will sign this to whoever gets it if they want to personalize it. But it's sort of like the prototype of Blast Tyrant. And there's a couple different pages. Uh, All right, so let me get this straight. So we've got a completely clutch signed orange base head. We've got a pedal to give away. We've got a, a way, way back vintage vinyl that you're going to get signed. We've got an original piece that you did while on tour as a set list. And we have an original concept art for one of your albums. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm there donating. it is, Christopher Hattenaggy donated $257. I, that's that's what's, yeah, we knew that was coming. A, dang it, I had this laminate. There's an Earth Rocker laminate, and I put it down. I can't find it. It's it's my laminate with my picture on it uh, from the Earth Rocker tour. That uh, is so cool. Okay, so I, we've got uh, orange. Around, somewhere around this room. <laughs> so just to recap everything, so we've got an uh, orange amplifier bass head, we've got a pedal, both of which signed by the entire band. We have a vintage vinyl going up for sale, it's going to be, or not sale, sorry, for a giveaway, it's going to be signed by the entire band. We've got an originally drawn set list by Neil while on tour, and we've got a laminate, and we've got uh, a early concept art for your album. So all of this stuff is going to be given away, all you have to do exclamation point donate get your ilf bucks in exclamation point ga space the amount of bucks that you have i i cannot wait to see who wins these that's gonna be amazing and there's one more thing and this was, this was <laughs> one more thing you're, you're hurting me so much. arrived in the mail uh from susie collins who's a big supporter 
of the band. All the yeah, way in the UK, awesome. right? Yeah, she's awesome. And she had this, this is incredibly flattering that someone would like spend the time and money to make this, but I will sign this to whoever wins it if you want it, but it's, uh, well, it, it's my face. So I'm not gonna hang it up in my house, but it's words that are from lyrics, uh, people in clutches universe. What? A song Good title. Lord. It's all, it's all text. That is and amazing. But she made it so it looks like your face from far away. Well, this this is a I, I believe the guy's name, he's from Wales, and I forget his name. Uh, but he does this is his, his gig. He makes portraits or uh, photos with text. And that's what that is. That's amazing. That is beautiful. Yeah. All right. So there's not multiple giveaways. All you got to do it. is enter the one. And we're going to be pulling names for this incredible stuff. I apologize for interrupting the Q&A. Please continue. I, uh, no, that's so it. That's all it, I got. Is it is it illegal if right like before we do the giveaway I remove everybody from the chat and there's no names there? Well, Chris, you don't have that power. I have that power, ball. and yes, that is illegal. So no, we will not be doing that. <sighs> but I have to eat the sandwich of suffering right after. You can give me some hope and happiness. Buy the ticket, take the ride, man. <laughs> I thought last year was bad. Last there, year, there's other stuff that I have, well, I'm way I'm sitting on, but this I thought was the most manageable because a lot of these things are smaller. But I've got some big things for next time we do this. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so where we left off was potential show in Alaska as your first show, mm -hmm. and first show post COVID. I I just I can't imagine what it's going to be like like my you know the first time you're with humans in a place and your favorite band is playing and you're hearing the music that you've been waiting for like you said it's not the same i mean i i bought every doom saloon ticket and i put it on our big screen with our sound system and i turned it up till the volume didn't go anymore yeah. and it still wasn't the same as being in the the in the, the place you know in, in the in the club it wasn't the same but I can't imagine what it's going to be like the year and a half later after we've all been quarantined. Uh, maybe it's not quite the same thing, but I did something with Angela and I, my wife, uh, we went out to the movies last night. Oh, did you? It was awesome. You know, yeah. Was, like there's, you take for granted so much and it, it, sometimes it requires having to get it taken away. So you, these simple pleasures of life can come to appreciate again. Yeah. And I just remember the whole time I was thinking, wow, we're being really naughty right now. Like this is, <laughs> like, this is misbehaving in some way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but we walked to the movies, came back, and I laughed. Uh, this is, I, we went to go see The Big Lebowski, which I've seen like countless times, but it's the funniest version I've ever seen of it. I was in stitches. So hopefully shows are like that too, you know? Yeah. People will put their energies and their pent up frustrations in a positive way. Sometimes, you know, nightclubs and heavy music can be not so nice, <laughs> but I, I would hope that people all get the same memo. Yeah. Like, let's not screw this up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm hoping that, you know, like that the vibe will be, man, we haven't done this and now we're together as a family, you know, yeah. whatever. We're together with the uh, family of clutch. So let's all like be respectful and nice and just rock out. It's live music. You know, I go see bands. When it, when a band is on, it, it's like a religious experience. Yeah. Know? Like uh, when a band is in sync with the crowd and the crowd's in sync with the band, time stops and you've participated in a human sacrament that's yeah. as old as we are as, as a species yeah and i feel very fortunate to be like spending my life doing that so that's cool i, I can't wait yeah so what's, what's it going to be like for you guys what's it going to be like for the for the band to, to be playing that first show after two i mean i know you've played doom saloon but you had a crowd of like three people 
you yeah. know, Dave and Allie and like maybe one other guy. So how, you know, how is it going to be playing again in front of the audience? It's going to be an exercise for me. I know it's going to be an exercise of self-control. We were talking about um, potential new album yeah. happening in October for recording. And yeah. then, and then when, when can we expect it? Springtime. It typically, you know, in history, you'd have to hand in an album and then it takes three months to manufacture it, distribute and get into people's hands. Now it's six months. So it's, we, huh. the order of operations are a little bit tricky because of backlog. Um, okay. One of the, it's kind of weird to see how the pandemic affects things in ways you never saw coming. Like you think vinyl pressing plants, this is a, early 20th century technology, but they're having a hard time staffing the pressing uh, because it's a very particular uh, skill set. It's it's archaic. It's an art in a lot of ways as much as it's technology. So we have to get that stuff handed in super early. That's why the last Doom Saloon, it took six months for people to mm. get the record. And it's it's not us, it's, every, it's, it's the whole uh, industry yeah so that's what we're hoping because we're going to go on tour you know in springtime to support that record and this is the fun part of the record is kind of looking at the songs and seeing who makes the team and who <laughs> doesn't you know it's, uh, it's what is that process like because that sounds like it would not be easy when you have four people and maybe one guy really like wrote that song or loved that part and Everyone else is voting it out. Yeah, that's that. That takes some time to learn how to deal with that. I mean, I've I've learned that sometimes you just have to give it up. Like you may become emotionally invested in something that you think is awesome, and you're the only person on God's green earth who thinks that. <laughs> so, uh, it, the, it, it's the band. It, it has it has a hive mind. Everyone, I'm sure every band is different because of the personalities involved. Um, so at the end of the day, what I just tell myself is whatever is going to make for the best song, for the best album, for the people to listen to. That's it. Yeah. And if I liked some idea and no one wants to ever hear it again, so be it. <laughs> fine. It's fine. Yeah. But it's a, it's well, it, at times it's the most frustrating process. Like you can, it's like that uh, character on Sesame Street that smashes head into the piano keys. <laughs> yeah. you remember that guy? Maybe it was a Muppet yeah. Show or some app. Yeah, the Muppet Show. Yeah, you could be that guy. And also when you come up with the idea, it's like complete elation. <laughs> so it's like always going back between those two. That's That's great. Yeah. So out of so you said you had thirteen that you wrote though. Well, we've written probably sixty or seventy different ideas. Oh my! So, but some of those things are you know DOA, and you know sometimes they you got to step take a step back, and months later it sounds different. And huh. the thing about Tim, John, Paul, and Dan is those guys can write way more music that I could ever possibly come up for lyrics to. It's, <laughs> it could be overwhelming, but that's a, that's a good problem. Yeah. Uh, so do they, so, is, you know, and this is kind of just a personal curiosity. Do they write actual music and then give you the music and then you come up with lyrics for that music? Oh, we all do. I mean, typically like a practice will be like, um, someone has an idea that they came up with at home. And that can be any one of the four of us. And then we'll kick it around and record it and put it away. Uh, sometimes it's just a jam. Like we just, we'll say, okay, let's do something in F sharp at 116 BPM and see what happens. And then we kind of do this shootout where J JP will have, you know, 16 bars to do whatever he wants and then we'll go to dan we'll do 16 bars i'll do 16 bars and tim will do 16 bars and we just keep going around 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 around, around. hopefully something cool happens huh. a lot of times nothing happens um, 
but it's it's like exercise. It's like exercise. I mean, I find the best songs are the ones that write themselves very quickly. Huh. It's the ones you pound your head against the keyboard. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, That's fascinating. The, the creative process is to me is something like I always think about. Like I wish there was some kind of magic pill. Yeah. That you could take to make it happen, but it's just it, the psychology of it is 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 confounding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly can't figure out how anyone would, you know, ever write song, write music with other people. Like if it was you writing all of the music and the lyrics, that makes more sense to me than four people let's say four people let's say hey let's let's all write a book we're all going to write a chapter mm. and then put it together and it will be cohesive yeah I, I i get that but i think music is it's completely different in that it's a physical thing it's like it's work mm. you it's like it takes more than one person to build uh, to do a like a like a barn raising okay you got to get the community to do the barn raising because it's too much for one person one person that's kind of boring okay you know, it's, it's I almost that. like it's almost like i call the shots i i know bands and there's that one dude who does that and i would never want to be in a band like that because there's yeah. not a lot of surprise there are songs where Tim, JP, or Dan came up with an idea, and at first I was like, no. <laughs> but then listening to it, I was like, oh, wait, that's really cool. Yeah. I, I never would have thought of that. That's, that's, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I think, I think you can kind of get the sense when, you know, anyone is a fan of Clutch, you listen to the song, you get a sense that it's a collaborative effort, and you can see it when you guys play live on stage. You can see how everyone loves it, and you guys all gel together. 30 years now which is ridiculous to say out loud isn't it it's it's absurd. <laughs> i mean that's that's crazy right like you've been doing this for 30 years man it's more than half of my adult, my life it's it's well over half of my life and that, that's that's awesome if you think it, about it, it is awesome and I, i'm so thankful i mean to be, to be able to make a living and by that i mean just provide for my family yeah and the creative arts that's a pretty rare thing yeah so i treat this with the utmost respect and gratitude because i know tons of artists who have to shove aside their passion to the weekend or after the kids go to sleep or maybe even tragically never so yeah it, it is if you had told me this 30 years ago i would have laughed yeah no way which which kind of brings me up to a really cool covid story with you is um you know kind of kind of just the whole concept of how appreciative you are with the path that you have that this young man decided to do covers of clutch songs with his dad and wrote his own song and sent it to you you want to tell us that story because it's just kind of like a heartwarming like what the heck did neil fallon just do that what yep um Adam and Tyler that did the Adam is the dad, Tyler's the son. I believe their last name is Pomerantz, but I, I may be massacring the pronunciation. Uh, someone tagged me on Twitter, and I have this love hate relationship with social media. Yeah. Like everyone else, there are days when I'm like I'm deleting yeah. it. I want it out of my life. It's toxic. I, I can't stand it. But then this happened. I was like, wait. This is the only way I never would have, I mean, I yeah. would have found out about this is through Twitter or, or Instagram, whatever it was. And it was his father's son just covering clutch. And to me, that's incredibly flattering that someone wants to cover your, you know, music. Second, it's a father son bonding time. Like that's, yeah. still, that's a sacred ground. And we, we somehow participated in that. So I was going to, with Nate Bergman, uh, we we're just gonna lay down vocals on a cover song and surprise him. And I reached out to Adam and he was like, well, Tyler's got his own songs. And I, I've said this before, I, when I heard that, I was like, oh, oh no. no, 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 no. 
but he, he, the kid's a ripper. And he's awesome at playing guitar, bass. I think he's playing drums now too. Wow. How and old is he? I think he's, if he's not, I think he's nine, maybe 10. Oh, dear God. Really? So I did this and I, I, I put it out there and I, I warned Adam prior. I said, look, social media is is gross and if you're going to do this you can put your kid out there and you could get some some blowback from jerks and he said he said i don't care so this is my kid and i love this and i was like yeah. yes yeah so he did it and i was proven wrong every there wasn't one negative comment it was all just like thank you this is like easy and, and fun and <laughs> it, it was really heartwarming and then yeah. he went on to do it with other bands uh oh did he really over, over and over again yeah quite a bit I, he's doing shows now what and you might have given this kid a whole new life yeah I, I, I don't know it, it's kind of it's very it's humbling to say i mean <laughs> all i did was write lyrics which is i love to do and then I filmed the video on the other side of this wall in my basement on my phone, which didn't cost anything. It just, <laughs> it was fun. Still, I mean, and, that you know, it's, it's priceless to see like a kid like find something and, yeah. and run with it. Yeah. So that, 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 that is a heartwarming cool. story. It, it kind of, it's, it's, it saved, it stopped me from deleting all my social media accounts. Yeah. I'm this close to doing it. I, because I, I remember seeing the video and thinking, wow, like, how, like for that kid, like when I was nine, if one of my heroes had said, like, just even reached out to me and just said hello, that would have blown my mind. But then to have him write lyrics for a song you wrote and do the whole thing, that. I mean, I'm looking at it now, man. It's got almost 200,000 views. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's 200,000 awesome. views, the joy of homeschooling. You got 200,000 views for this kid, and he's sitting there and now has video with Neil Fallon, 200,000 views. That yeah, is just he's crazy. done it with a lot of other artists, and, you know, it's like... <laughs> I know a lot of parents these days, like, worry and fret about online and virtual and this yeah. and that and that I get it because uh, I'm one of them yeah. but I think the the human instinct to make physical noise overrides all of that yeah you know the banging on the log uh, uh, all the all the tech moguls in the world aren't going to stop that yeah yeah, and you did it. That's great, man. That's a cool story. Okay, look, we got a couple questions here. I see somebody asking um, about your degrees. What is your What are your college degrees in? <laughs> college degrees. <laughs> I have a degree in English. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't. I, so, someone was curious about your degrees. Multiple. He said, "Don't doesn't he have an English degree?" Yeah, you I know. Do. I do have, I have a degree in English, and I'm very proud of it. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes I mean, sense I, I with your lyrics. It. I get to use it, you know. Yeah, the English is a, de a degree that you think, well, I just wanted to read books in college. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's got, not too often you see someone with an English degree where they actually get to use that degree. It is, and I'm I want another reason to be thankful. I mean, learning. I'm sure going on tour. That is the that was the best education you could ever get. Seeing the world is mm. the best education you can ever get. Meeting people in real life and not through books, not through movies, not through the internet. But that was priceless. But learning in lieu of that, books were the next best thing. Learning people, whether it be you can hear people's opinions from the past. Mm -hmm. You know history that it, it's really boggling and I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it i, I love english because it's such a i'm glad it was my native language because it's it is, I'm, I'm trying not to cuss 
<laughs> you did very it, good. I a, saw what was going to come out, and you, yeah. you did very good there. So. <laughs> it is a hard language to learn the nuances, <laughs> especially stuff. So, yeah, here we are. Seeing a family that I have that are non-native English speakers and trying to learn the language, it is a difficult because the rules don't make sense. Whereas in many other languages, there are rules about things when the when these words and and sounds come out. But in English, we can just change that whenever we want. That's one of the. I, I think that's one of the reasons English is sort of the default language for rock and roll. Huh. You can you can make stuff up. I mean, you can like do wop or. You could just make up words. I mean, Interesting. most, I never of, thought most of, that. of slang is just from jazz musicians just making stuff up. There's the there, there are no rules, and that's why it's also really difficult, but also creatively a, a, a wide a wide palette. That's not to say that other languages don't have awesome songs; they do. Yeah, but English. Uh, there's so many people that are not native speakers of English that will do the song in English. Yeah. Not so many, maybe for you know the U.S. market, but also it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I I always laugh at those shows like The Voice or something, but from a foreign country where <laughs> these people will come on and sing completely the songs in complete English, but then they're talking in their foreign language. And I'm always like, man, that's just crazy that like English is the language of, of, of much, of much music. I shouldn't say, oh, not all music. Probably, but. probably Amer American rock and roll did more to like broadcast the <coughs> English language than did the British empire. Hmm. In my uneducated opinion. Well, <laughs> hey, we could say that. I mean, look what's happening, right? With music and how much it's changed the world. I yeah, mean, it's it's a it's a it's a force. Yeah, when you look at just the advancement in music from, I mean, don't even go back so far. Just go back like the of the the introduction of the electric guitar to where we are today, and that short period of de of decades, and how music has changed completely. You know, it's wild. I, I always bug out on this. The Beatles were a band for eight years. Really? Eight years. That's it. That's it. Why does my head think it was like 30 years? Yeah. yeah. You grew up with it. You were a baby when you got introduced to it. But, and they don't only toured for half of that. And if you look at them the way they started and the way they end, like where they were from the beginning to the end, the bookends of their career, how much happened in the 1960s? It's, yeah. I, Bathroom. That's actually a little mind blowing. I did not know it was eight years. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I feel like probably what you said, just growing up with them, I kind of felt like, you know, they were one of the pivotal starting bands of music, you know, so they've been around forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. it's, it, it blows me away that they covered that much ground and territory in yeah. that short period of time. I think yeah. a lot of back then, you know, it was, bands were constantly being pushed to record and a lot faster than now but hmm. it's a testament to their skill uh let's see so oh someone's saying uh, they listen to music in spanish because it helps them learn the language much better mm -hmm. um ah here's a question for you has there been one continuous storyteller through all of your albums Ooh, that's pretty heavy. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't know if I know the answer to that because I don't know if I want to meet that person. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, the muse is someone that you're like terrified of <laughs> because you're at the mercy of the muse. Uh, there are story there there are writers that you know i can't believe how good they are but i don't actively try to you know mimic them uh wow that, that that's that's a very good question and i don't know if i know the answer to it i uh let's see sassafras cove that's his name sassafras cove mm -hmm. ask that question so sassafras that is a great question 
I mean, uh, all the times I've interviewed Neil on different shows and asked him everything I can think of, I have not thought of that question, and it is quite fascinating. Hmm. It is. I, it, go, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, but like trying to understand the creative process. Yeah. What, why is it sometimes so easy? Why is it so frustrating at times? And I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't. And I know I love it. You know, it's, it's worth it. But um, I think probably a lot of it has to be being a good listener is a good portion of the the ingredient list. You have to just kind of be a professional eavesdropper in a lot of ways. Uh, just listening to conversations or sometimes silence and listening to the birds in the wind. Mm. Those are that sometimes that's when like awesome ideas happen. Yeah. You just kind of, you, you, when you, you allow your brain to relax and the subconscious kind of gets to flex and go into dream time. I remember being told, you know, you're a daydreamer, stop daydreaming. <laughs> and I understood why that was, you know, my parents' generation was like, daydreaming will get you nowhere. <laughs> but it can. Yeah. We, you know, it got you somewhere. <laughs> it can get a, it can get anyone watching this right now with you, you know, in any aspect, whether you be in, you know, IT, uh farming, I don't know, whatever. It it takes the moment of like sitting back and just saying what if yeah it's a it's an awesome luxury you, you know i've always uh, i know we you and i spoke about this uh this before but the uh um uh, marcus the character marcus mm. that you created uh he's kind of been through many many of your albums he's grown and you know from one one album to another to this you know to the final story of him riding his uh, war elephants to the circus um when you created him was that your thought did you say this character is going to live with me for the next 30 years or did you just create him and then the next album there was a place for him and then the next album there was a place for him you, you want to know the god's honest truth about the genesis of marcus yeah i'll tell you <laughs> the it started on the very first tours that, not even tours, like when the band would do like a couple of runs through Pennsylvania or through Virginia or Ohio. And we finally started like spending hours upon hours with each other in a band, which is, if, a, if that's the true test of a band, when you can get through that, then a lot, everything else is kind of cake. <laughs> and I remember, and this was John Paul, I don't know, probably over-caffeinated, uh, not enough sleep. He and I started this joke about any time we wanted to fill up the van that we would assume the character of Marcus. And Marcus was just this kind of punisher. <laughs> or have a better word, he'd just like punish you, asking you questions, expressing his opinions on this and that in life. And we just started doing it probably to break up the tedium of the mind. <laughs> so Marcus, that was, I think one of us said, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Mark, I'm a Shogun. I've been trained in the ancient Japanese martial arts. Just messing around. <laughs> so it ended up in a song. And I kind of see him. Named as, Marcus. Yeah, I see him as like a, um, um, and he's not a clown, but he's the guy that we can all relate to. Like, he's just he's living on the margins of the reality. <laughs> we often want to do that, but you know, that's, the, that's, that's the story of Marcus. That's crazy. So, okay, so I get the origin story, but then after you put him in that, the album and, you know, you have the song Shogun Named Marcus, did you say, hey, this guy's going to live with us now for the rest of our album lives no not really but sometimes i think when i kind of ran out of an idea i would go back go back to marcus <laughs> like hey he do help me out here come on That's marcus give me a bone you know it, it is true i know a marcus and he is kind of like a clown 
So yeah, I, I do understand that. And then he's listening too. But yeah, I do. I do get that. You know. Hey, uh, John, do you have a, a question or an announcement or what? What's happening? Uh, just a quick announcement. All right. So I just want to let everybody know this is your six-minute warning on the giveaway. Now, also, not only is this, in my opinion, the coolest giveaway we've done all day, it's also the last one. So if you have any remaining bucks, there's no reason not to use them. Let's get them used because as soon as that clock strikes 650, the giveaway is over and your bucks are useless. So how do you how do time. you use them? Tell Here's, people how to use them because like you have them, but now how do you put yes. them towards something? So here is the here's the reminder. You have to use exclamation point G A space however many bucks you want to use. Okay, that's it. You have to have the space. I've seen a few people in chat do G A and a number G A space and then a number and the bot will tell you you are entered as a confirmation. Okay, to check how many bucks you have remaining, all you got to do is type in exclamation point bucks and it will tell you. That's all you got to do. Exclamation point bucks and then exclamation point G A and whatever, however many you've got left, because now is the time. Use them or lose them. So I'll let you guys continue chat chatting for another few minutes, and then in about uh, five minutes here, we're gonna pull winners. I'm I'm just applying everything I have to to those <laughs> things. So I've just <laughs> been saving all day. That's what I'm doing. Um, with that one. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Um, there was another question up here which I thought was really good. Uh, let's see. Okay. So so, where is it? I just passed it because I had to do that whole thing, but let's see. Um, okay, a lot of compliments on your intelligent lyrics. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of people saying they can definitely see your, your degree um, uh, coming through in, in, uh, in your lyrics. Um, let's see, where is it? Something it was something about... Uh, life is weird, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Yep. Good, good, good. That's just a comment. Uh, elephant riders. I always listen to elephant riders on my trips down to Harper's Ferry. Okay. That's just a comment. Uh, ah, your headspace. So is your headspace different today with bad decisions versus when you wrote, when you were in elephant riders? I'm not sure if I understand that. Um, your headspace so like um maybe we're, yeah maybe uh how about instead of me uh translating non-demon uh why don't you tell us a little more about what you mean and i'll and move on to, to while, while, they're, while they're translating i'll say like in in elephant riders when we recorded that i was in my mid-20s hmm. living in a house with a band not married no kids uh Basically, I, I don't want to say underappreciated, but I was like kind of just fell into this rock thing. And since that time, I've become very appreciative and, and very defensive about it. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I under, understand how rare this is. Um, I think living in, in the band house was, was great. I think I certainly wouldn't do it today. It was disgusting. It was gross. We had we had mushrooms growing out of our bathroom wall in our <laughs> Not but, on purpose. But, so you weren't growing no, shrooms. No, they, they they were just like fungus <laughs> coming out of the walls <laughs> in our bathroom. There were snakes, possum. There was it, it was it was disgusting. And I loved Where did you movie. live in a tent? Um, basically, it was a, a stone tent. It was a house that was built in 1780. It used to be the uh, house of the, um, he worked at Harper's Ferry, like the, like the general at arms of Harper's Ferry, right after the Revolutionary War. That's where he lived. And it became uh, used in the Civil War as it, it passed between hands, between the well, Union and Confederacy many, many times. And it, this house was, it, it, it's amazing. It, it, it was amazing. We've been there since. And it was not a place I would ever try to 
live again. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah, and that they, sounds it horrible. Built, it was built in 1780, and I think the last like refurbishment was in 1880. <laughs> but it, it was it was a good time. It, there were no neighbors. The, it was sick. the rent. It had 12 acres, a barn, with four bedrooms. The rent was $600 a month. Wow. So you're a broke rock band. What better conditions could you possibly live in? Yeah, you have a you have a barn for practice. You got some possums if you get hungry. We have possums. <laughs> it was uh, it was living in, it was definitely off the grid. There was no one had cell phones. There was no computer in the house. It was it was a good time. Uh, non demon did speak up. He said that was it. You answered his question perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was a lucky guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, the pan the eastern panhandle of West Virginia is an amazing place. It really is. That, that right, so we sounds... are about to end. Uh, we're about to wrap the giveaway up and start announcing winners. But there is one more question um, that just came through here. Why why is the band name Clutch? Very good question. I ask myself that every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> we uh, at the time we still are huge prom fans. There was a band named Prong, and there was also a band locally in DC, Swizz. So we had it in our heads. We wanted a monosyllabic name. And we came up with Clutch. And I think we honestly, we intended to change it, but we had to put it on a flyer to, in some show in Baltimore, or DC, and we did. And then it got to the point where people were coming to the show, recognizing the name. So we were like, that's it. And I think we all kind of were of the opinion that this was our automotive clutch. It was only years later that we also learned that that clutch also means a <clears throat> small women's purse <laughs> or uh, a nest of eggs or uh, snakes. So there you go. <laughs> that is awesome. And the giveaway is closed. I'd also like to say, Marcus. What the heck? Just dropped another thousand dollars. Thank you so much. That pushes us fifty-two thousand six hundred and fifty-one dollars. Now I that know doesn't full change well, our opinions on Marcus's. Just want to let you know. I know okay. full well Marcus did that because he's enthusiastic about what's about to happen. But before we get to the sandwich, uh, we've got to give away some clutch stuff. All right. So let's start pulling names. We're gonna start with the laminate of Neil, signed by him, and the winner of that is me. Synopsis. Oh. Synopsis. Congratulations. All right. Speak up in chat so we can find you easy. Around here somewhere. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next one. Now, the next one is the word art. Now, on that word art, I did find the name of that artist. I, I wanted to shout him out because Susie has been amazing through this whole thing. And Susie uh, really wanted us to make sure we gave him uh, proper credit where it is due. Arwen? Is Arwen Davies. Yeah, Arwen, yeah. Yes, Arwen Davies is the name of the artist. And it's a beautiful piece. So... The signed word art from uh, Neil, that goes to? Me. Goody, 537. Congratulations, Goody, you 537. Are dead to me, Goody. All right. Now we're going to get to the Neil set. We got another anonymous donation of $2,575. Come on. $2, no, we can't. 55 because now I have to add something. $55,000. Oh, you're going to have to add something, Chris. Oh, All right. No. Whew. That is incredible. All right, so where were we? Uh, Neil's set list that he made while on tour. The winner of that is? Me. Heroes 88. Jake, oh. congratulations, man. All right. Now on to the vintage signed vinyl. That's going to Wolfpack, PhD. Congratulations, oh, man. you <laughs> Wolfpack, congratulations. Thank you for showing up. All right, and now we're on to the bass pedal, signed by the entire band. Bass pedal's going to Rev Dude. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations, I hope you play man. guitar. I hope you play guitar. Oh, he does. That's Nick. Oh, is it? Wow, yeah. awesome. I'm really happy for him. Congratulations, that's, man. That's that is great. awesome. He's a volunteer with us. That That is great because you would... You will benefit from that beautiful yeah. piece of technology. He plays bass, and he has been here working his tail off since 9 a.m. 
So congratulations, that is awesome. Nick. Good for That's him. That's awesome. All right, and finally, the actual big old boy, the Orange Amp bass head, signed by the whole band of Clutch. That goes to Cyberwolf. Oh my gosh, Stacia! Congratulations. That what? is awesome. So Holy wait, cow. Stacia, his wife won the amp, and he she won did. the. Hey, they've been donating hundreds of dollars the whole day. They've been here all day long, working their butts off modding. They worked before. That is a well-deserved prize. Congratulations, guys. All right. Sorry, Chris. I'm, you got to take I'm, the album. I'm happy. Yeah. No, I'm happy. I'm happy for all of them. That's great. Actually, since they play guitar, those are some great wins for people who play guitar. Oh, yeah. And what better than to have them signed by the band? I mean, that is just awesome. a, that's a piece, man. That's I'm, glad awesome. it's, I'm glad it's going somewhere where it's going to get use. Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, seriously, that, that is the best way. That is amazing. All right. So thank you so, so much for being here, Neil. Chris has some work to do. So while Chris goes to get everything prepared, uh, I'm going to make some final <laughs> wrap up announcements for us. And then we're going to get on to the good part. The completed, Leave Neil in the room so he can at least comfort oh yeah. me. Okay. The completed I'm gonna, standards of suffering. I'm going to go um, and get all the items ready and get the other laptop up. Okay. I'm going to hold your hand. Yes, I want you to hold my hand. I'm going to need it, man. This is going to be painful. Painful.